So we quickly prepared uh, in this coffee break. I didn't have my coffee <laughs> because I was preparing this summary and next steps. Um, it is for your validation and I'm uh, probably forgetting a lot of things, so uh, it will be discussed before the closure. Uh, the f it was a very intense and packed meeting. Uh, the first uh, day uh, was uh, dedicated to the country's uh, perspective. And the summary of the, of the country contribution is that we had good participation from countries that are at different stages of the NCP development. But despite these different st um, stages, they all have highlighted common threads that I uh, resume as the fact that, of course, the NCP, the producing, developing the national cholera plan, should be, is a uh, country-driven process um, by which a political engagement uh, uh, and a political will should go beyond the single ministers, but it should be a multi-sectoral effort. And we have seen examples of how this often is, is done as assured by um, placing the, the national cholera programs uh, at a level that is uh, directly beyond the, the president, the vice president, or high, high political figures. Um, that a political will uh, and engagement is not enough, but there needs to also be a financial commitment to ensure sustainability of this uh, of these NCPs. And of course, uh, the GTFCC and, and partners and donors can support, but unless there is a sustainability and financial systems in countries to ensure that the, the cholera eliminate, is eliminated, we will not go far. Um, we have seen that a lot of the countries uh, have that, that were present here have identified the hotspots and know very well where their problem is. Um, and many have uh, been organizing vaccination campaigns targeting those hotspots. Um, it is seem to be uh, more challenging to focus the wash activities, which are by definition broader and much uh, more than just cholera control, uh, specifically at hotspot level. So there's a need to be a, a bit of reflection on, on that. Um, and there is need of, of uh, technical support from the GTFCC partners for, for this targeting and, and for other technical ad, um, aspects. But especially, uh, the countries highlighted the need to, to support their advocacy endeavors in, uh, in this regard. The next steps uh, are that, um, as you know, the NCP framework is in, uh, in finalization, so we, we will um, hopefully with the support of these countries, pilot it and validate it, including the, the budgeting tool that was presented by, by Guy uh, yesterday. In terms of the um, NCP framework finalization, um, the, the so-called cookbook, um, we highlighted the importance of transitioning from uh, what was the emergency mode, the acute wash into of course, long-term development, which is essential for, for cholera elimination. And targeting, um, not only targeting interventions when there is cholera, this is self-explanatory, but once cholera is gone, what type of interventions do we want to plan and how do we want to achieve uh, the, the elimination or let's say the preventing the, the recurrent uh, um, transmission? Um, and balance this uh, Laser, within the NCPs, Barron's laser approach uh, was mentioned this morning by, by Daniel, in which we focus uh, strictly on cholera with a broader angle where we have the SDGs, we have other disease programs that should also be um, covered by, by, of course, the national governments. And in this regards, we had two technical groups um, in, in this working group meeting. One was looking at the, at the wash vulnerabilities to try to systemize indicators and risk factors for hotspot analysis and targeting the NCPs. And the next step with that regards is that uh, a, a task group, there's many names on, on that board, will work in the coming weeks and liaise with the AP working group to, 
to produce uh, a technical guidance on this. And the other group was, uh, was the group on advocacy, which highlighted the importance, uh, once again, uh, of national advocacy uh, more than the global advocacy, which seems to, be, to have been covered, and the technical and, and political um, engagement, um, including the resource mobilization. And there is also a group, uh, a task group for that, uh, that will work in the coming weeks on, on specific uh, strategies. And then uh, we looked at the research, um, and we talked about the, the, the transitioning research into practice. And the, the examples, the presentations this morning were very exciting in this sense. And it seems that all the partners, whether they are academic institutions or uh, international NGOs, seem to be aligned into, into this challenge of, of uh, uh, translating uh, the research and the priorities into practice. And of course, this is not something that belongs strictly only to the WASH working group, but there needs to be synergy with all other working groups. And flexibility between focusing on the research priorities that were presented by Monica, but also leaving space for thinking out of the box, um, innovative approaches and other ideas if we want to advance also that piece. And once uh, we translated the research into practice, <laughs> we also want to translate the research into something that is shareable. So the importance of, of developing a knowledge management platform after this uh, research is generated so that the research doesn't remain. I think Paul said there's an average of two, two people that read the, each article that is uh, published online or something like that. We need to go <laughs> try to promote this much, much more than that so that it's practical and it is helpful for countries. And in this sense, the work towards the research platform within the GTFCC will try to, to fill that need. In terms of, of, um, of training, um, we, there's been, uh, there was a repository that was launched a, a couple of, of years ago. Um, it hasn't evolved much, so there's, there's a, the opportunity to clean this, this, uh, this repository, asking for partners for, for existing guidance and trainings, and also go, go to the countries and measure the capacity and the needs at their level for the NCPs to be, for, for the integration within the national cholera plants. Um, I think this is the last slide, which was the last, um, topic uh, of, of the meeting was the additional technical guidance needed in this WASH package that we want to insert in the, in the NCPs. The first piece, I think there was a, a overall theme, was this, uh, this issue of hotspot identification and preparing a guidance that combines the WASH vulnerabilities with the, with the AP um, data. Um, then uh, uh, additional work, additional guidance uh, will have to be, will go on to the WASH and OCV in, in hotspots. So what to do with regards to WASH during the, the vaccination campaigns. Um, there is also need to produce specific guidance on the role and, uh, and the TORs of the rapid response teams. Uh, um, this, uh, there's several countries, Haiti, Yemen, and, and DRC that have produced the work on, on rapid response teams. So it's a matter of, of consolidating these TORs and see what works, what doesn't, et cetera, based on this experience. And last but not least, um, working on the community engagement, especially with regards to the WASH. Um, we actually have a smaller working group tomorrow, uh, meeting tomorrow for, for, for this. And the need to, um, to go beyond uh, just disseminating messages, but adapting the strategies using an analytical approach that is, that is evidence-based. Um, I obviously forgot, I was caught, so I, I probably just had to close the, the parentheses, or, or I don't know if I had other points there, but uh, I think this is the last try. Thanks to you. <laughs> That's not me. <laughs>